Hey guys, uh, I have been taking a little break recently. I've kind of burnt myself out the last uh, go round. I was working on the van again. I uh, feel like I've been working on this thing so long and it's so close to the end, but I just had to take a little break uh, to kind of get enough energy to finish it off. Uh, also, during this time, I've kind of had to do some research and find the right people to modify some things that need to be changed that might not necessarily work with uh, with this conversion, but that other people are using for other conversions. So it's kind of been a slow process figuring all that stuff out and uh, finding somebody to make or modify or finding the time to do it myself of what I need done. So I believe I am coming down to the very end of getting everything that I need compiled and modified and ready to install. So that's good news. But um, probably over the next few weeks, maybe a month, I'll completely be done with everything that I personally will be doing. Uh, after I finish everything, uh, the only things that remain to get the thing driving is uh, getting a drive shaft made. and. Uh, I plan on taking the van again to uh, Mike at Rocky Mountain Westie. Uh, I've been talking with him yesterday. Um, I think he's going to make some custom skid plates for me as well as a two-piece drive shaft. Um, and my idea behind that is I plan on making it two-piece so it will help with some of the vibrations and having a carrier bearing in the middle of it or close to one side to kind of also help with the vibration issues. Uh, so that will help with some flexibility and vibration and I'm going to need to make a drive shaft anyway since I moved the, the motor back towards the rear of the van again anyway to get the, the transmission to fit up behind the cross member. So uh, I plan on recording and, and uploading a lot of videos here in the next few weeks to a month like I said. So if you're interested, if you're following along, stay tuned. Sorry it's been so long. I just needed to take a break. So uh, thanks for watching. As I was trying to flood the clutch hydraulic line, um, I noticed, let's see if I can get to it. This banjo bolt right here, it was leaking. Um, and I thought maybe the banjo bolt just needed to be tightened, but come to find out it was the actual line, the plastic hydraulic line that was leaking. So I went on a mission trying to find a, a local auto parts shop that had a flexible hydraulic line and uh, tried several different things and none of them seemed to work. So then, um, I was able to find an original stock uh, German piece, which comes complete with um, both connectors and a grommet. This is what it looks like without the grommet. I bought two, two new pieces. I was planning on just using the original piece here, um, but then I got to talking to a few people who had seemed to have several issues with this line busting or somehow the, the uh, connections right here leaking if you see they're not really uh they're just kind of heat shrunk around the actual barb so i don't know i was talking to a few people and they were talking about different solutions that they had and one guy got one completely made custom from a hydraulic line shop but uh i mean it's super expensive and i for me i wasn't willing to pay as much as one of those things cost to uh to get something that wasn't leaking, and that, that wouldn't leak on the road. I, would, I, w I was just planning on having a spare and just changing it out if I needed. But one guy told me that he got this. This is for the rear section of the hydraulic line, the clutch hydraulic line that goes to the slave cylinder. It's a little bit longer, but it's the same exact fittings. It comes with the banjo bolt, it comes with the connector and everything. And this goes in place of this, and this is a stainless braid line. You can see the Go Westy number here. Um, if I remember correctly, it's like 20 bucks or something like that. It's extremely cheap considering the other alternatives. So um, you can see right in here, uh, this is where the grommet comes out from by the, uh, by the clutch pedal. And I just kind of looped the line around. I'm going to zip tie everything closed. And then it connects right into the... Uh, the hard 
metal line that goes to the rear of the van. So for those of you who maybe have had this problem or issues with this, this is a good alternative if you're willing to have the extra, extra line. It's cheap, it's uh, better probably than, than these stock plastic ones. So now moving to the rear section of the clutch hydraulic line. Um, as I stated in a previous video, I got this from Dave Clymer. And this clutch slave cylinder is a better fit for the Volkswagen master cylinder and the Subaru transmission. The, the, the clutch pedal feels more, more normal with this slave cylinder. And uh, originally the, the actual inlet like this brass piece, um, actually it's this piece from Dave Clymer was supposed to come in right here and that interfered with the intake of the motor right here. I wasn't able to get a rubber boot on. I didn't feel comfortable with the metal rubbing up against everything. So I contacted him and he was actually able to modify it and move the connector onto this side. And for this conversion, I actually had to get a longer uh, hydraulic line to fit because I had moved the motor farther towards the rear of the van. So if you do do this conversion and you get this from Dave Clymer, just let him know uh, you want the the inlet over here for the hydraulic line on the opposite side as well as an extended line and he's got all the measurements for what you need and uh, he should know what you need if you just let him know ahead of time so keep that in mind um, so this line right here will then attach into this brass fitting and this end will go on the other end of the hard line that I was working on in the front of the van so it, it it's right up kind of right in around here on the bottom side.